I've been in I've been in the ministry for 35 years. I've traveled all over the world. I preach in a lot of places. And but when I'm studying the scriptures, and I come to something that is difficult to understand, or I need some assurance, I call Sam Waldron and say, <laughs> "Sam, could you help me out here?" And he's of course one of your one of your guys. And uh, you know, and that's a, that's a good lesson for young men. You know, I'm I'm 58, and yet. Um, I, w- I was working through a thing on, on missions one day, and I was, I was looking back at what, the way the old Baptists described their missionaries and things, and I was seeing things that just aren't talked about today. And so I called up Sam, and I said, Sam, can you help me out here? And, you know, he's like an encyclopedia. He just started going all the way down through everything. And uh, so I rely on some of your men, even when I'm, I'm already in the field. But, but I call and, and get advice and get counsel. So uh, we talked a little bit about Dr. Waldron there. Um, what do you consider other of our professors, men like Tom Askell, Tom Nettles, Fred Malone, Sam Renahan, and Richard Barcellus to be the kind of men that we need teaching in a seminary? Well, again, I've almost talked to every one of those men and it, for counsel, for other things. But, but see, here's the thing. There, you know, there's so many things being thrown around today, you know, sola scriptura, and it's written on t-shirts and everything. And I want to walk up to people and say, do you even know what that means? And, and these men represent something that we need. And what do I mean by that? For the last 20 years, there's been something of, you know, a growth in Calvinistic popularity or teaching or something especially young, among young men. And then there's this group called the Young Calvinist and all this. And um, now we're seeing that thing being shaken to its core. And the reason why is um, the Reformed faith is not based on one doctrine of soteriology. I'm a Calvinist. And, and uh, you know, uh, I came to those truths years and years ago, and I stand by them. And I, I love the truths of sovereign grace, but the Reformation is based on sola scriptura, and sovereign grace comes out of that. And sola scriptura is the idea that this is not our church. You and I have no right to invent. We have no right to, you know, come up with some new plan. We have been given charge over the bride of Christ. And if we lay one finger on her in a wrong way, we will have to deal with her spouse. And these men believe that. They believe it. Don't touch God's bride. Don't do anything to her that he hasn't decreed for her. And so, you know, one of the prayers that that I pray most of all, and the the men that work with me know this, is in Lord, is Lord, increase my fear of thee, that I not trespass in these areas that are, where angels fear to tread. And I believe that these men, with regard to the local church, Christ's bride, they have that fear. Um, is there anything else that, uh, that we haven't covered already that uh, you think really needs to be said about how, how the church is really responsible for the training of men? rather than a seminary, and yet the seminary is coming alongside the church. Right. And, and well, I believe, you know, there's always two extremes. You know, the seminary does all the training, or, you know, a man says, I'm not going to use anybody, I'm just going to train. And um, there are some men capable of doing that. You know, there are men who, who are exceptional, uh, pastors and scholars and, and things like that. But for the most of us... Um, most elders want to teach, can teach, should teach, and be an example, but there are many areas where they can bring in men of like faith, elders who also fear the Lord, churchmen who fear the Lord, to help them in the instruction of elders. And that's what we do in our church. That's exactly what we do in our church. One of the last things I would like to say is this. Um, I did not begin my Christian life in the Reformed faith. Um, My journey has been a long one, and a long one to sola scriptura and many of the doctrines that that are so precious to me now. I think about that at times and I'm almost angered. 
why as a young man was I left out there on my own and then have to go years and years learning so many things by myself that should have been handed down to me by godly elders who had lived their lives consuming the scriptures and, and men who had also been trained by other men. You know, I would plead with young people today, don't, don't go out there and reinvent the wheel. There is a sense of live and learn, which is very dangerous. Adam can tell you that. Or learn and live. Begin your ministry on a right foot. And so many people think, you know, uh, especially young people, I, I, young ministers, you know, uh, they'll come up, one guy at this conference, he came up and he said, I really want to talk to you because, you know, all the other men are about just doctrine, 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 but there's so much passion and power in what you're saying. And I said, hey, stop it right there. That, that is not um, a compliment. I said, you need to understand something. If I have passion, it's because of my doctrine. And the, this doctrine, not only did I learn myself studying the scriptures, but some of the men you're talking about are my mentors. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be where I am right now. And young people need to understand that. Yeah. Yes, they do. And, and then, you know, there are men who have forgotten more about God than I know. And if you talk to them or you listen to them preach, they're, they're very quiet, very somber. But inside of them is a boiling passion for Christ. And if it wasn't for their instruction, I wouldn't be out doing what I'm doing. And so I'd plead with young people, you know, humble yourself. Humble yourself and, and come and learn under men that love God and fear God. Thank you very much, you Paul. Bet.